the National Association of Realtors agreed to a settlement of $418 million related to how commission is paid to buyer's agents and seller's agents. And if you want to know how that's going to impact you, well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Thriving in the San Francisco Bay Area channel. I'm Rich Fleming, your local real estate agent, and I'm here to teach you everything related to real estate in the Bay Area and also what it's like to live here. I'm not gonna give you a long intro today. I just wanna jump into it. The major news in the world of real estate today is the settlement between the National Association of Realtors and some plaintiffs in a class action suit. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what the settlement is and please keep in mind the settlement still has to be approved by a court. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is how this can impact buyers and sellers, the economics of the settlement and how it may impact transactions. And then third, what the unintended consequences may be. All right, so let's just jump into it. I have my notes not super scripted today uh, in the video. So the settlement requires the National Association of Realtors to pay a settlement amount of $418 million over four years. The parties um, agree that individual realtors are now absolved of any liability uh, as part of this settlement and any smaller brokerage with less than two billion dollars in sales volume in 2022 is also absolved of any future liability. It does not absolve larger real estate companies of any potential future uh, action and it does not absolve any real estate company that is currently still in litigation of uh, future action. So those are the parties involved, that's the settlement. Some other requirements are that the real estate association is going to change its rules that say there's no requirement that the seller provide compensation to the buyer's agent. And the second thing is that they are removing rules that say that in the multiple listing service, it's known as the MLS, that basically disseminates property information out to agents and to the real estate sites such as Zillow. In the MLS, no longer will agents be able to see what the compensation level is that the seller is willing to pay the buyer's agent. So now in every transaction, compensation to the buyer's agent is going to be a point of negotiation. And that's fine, it's just a change. So those are the major things you can anticipate that this will go into effect. It's scheduled to go into effect, I believe in mid-July, um, assuming it gets approved by the court. Let's talk about what this means to buyers and sellers economically. Now here in California, especially the Bay Area, our contracts are already basically set up to do what this settlement requires. Uh, and it isn't uncommon in the Bay Area for sellers to say, hey, buyers have to pay their own agent or there's a flat fee. Um, that does happen. It's not by any stretch of the imagination most of the transactions in the area, but it does happen here and it's not uncommon. So we are already, uh, in my view, pretty set up to do this, but some other requirements are going to be that buyers now, before they look at any property with an agent, are going to be required to sign what's called a buyer's representation agreement. That means you are signing an agreement to have me or anyone else as an agent show you property and represent you. It spells out what the compensation that I will earn if you buy any property that I represent you for. And it also spells out whether that compensation will come from you or from the seller. And if it doesn't come from the seller, it will come from you and the amount of that compensation. That's going to be a new thing. Buyer's representation agreements exist. Uh, a lot of agents don't use them. Some do, I do use them. Uh, I won't say I use them 100% of the time, but I do use them. But starting in mid-July, it's going to be a requirement that if you're looking at a house, you sign a buyer's representation agreement. The next thing is that there is going to be, as I said, a change so sellers aren't mandated to 
pay the buyer. This is going to be interesting because it's going to impact sellers in different areas differently. If you are in a higher end, super high demand area, then the payment of the buyer's agent compensation is going to be a negotiable and something that buyers can use to sweeten their offer. So for example, if you get two offers in for $2 million for your home, one offers to pay the buyer's agent commission directly and the other asks you to pay it out of your proceeds, well, guess what? That first one is now more appealing. That I think you're going to start to see in those higher demand, especially higher end areas. But in many areas where the affluence of buyers isn't as great, most people have a limited budget for buying a house. And if I take money that I was going to use from down payment to pay an agent, that's now less money I have to buy the house, right? So that's going to have an impact uh, potentially on many, many sellers. And to, to really show you the impact of that, let me give you a quick example. So if a buyer has a total of $100,000 that they plan to use as a down payment for a home, well, the way, way financing works, generally, if you give $1 for a, a down payment, the bank gives you $4. So if you have $100,000, the bank will give you $400,000. You can afford a $500,000 home. You now have to take $10,000 out of your $100,000 to pay your agent directly. You only have $90,000 left for down payment and the bank will give you $4 for every $1 of down payment. That means $360,000. They'll give you in a loan. Together, you when you take your down payment and that loan amount, you can afford a $450,000 house. The house you can afford drops by $50,000 because you took $10,000 in cash to pay your agent. That's just how leverage works. One of the advantages of the seller paying the buyer's agent commission is that it essentially allows the buyer to finance their commission cost, right? The way the mortgage system works right now, you cannot directly add in the cost of commission into the loan amount. It's gotta be part of the house cost. So as the system for mortgages is set up right now, you can't finance commissions for the most part. So you could possibly see people trying to save, sellers trying to save $10,000 in commission, but now many of their buyers, they're gonna cut down on the number of people who can buy their home because they have now reduced the amount of buying power potential buyers have. So we'll have to see how that works out. That could be an unintended consequence in many areas that you know, you're cutting down on the number of buyers and it's going to put downward pressure on home prices. That could be an unintended consequence. A second unintended consequence is if this situation, and I don't know whether it will or not, starts to put pressure on the price or the compensation that buyers agents get, you're going to see consolidation in the real estate agent market. And what happens is if you consolidate enough you're going to start to then see price increases. Look at pretty much any industry. When you see consolidation, eventually you're going to see price increases because there's less competition. And those who are left in the market have incentive to naturally act in concert. Even if they don't directly communicate, they don't have incentive to compete as hard against each other. Their goal is to just keep prices up that could be another unintended consequences because they're forcing, this could force agents out of the business. People often think, oh, you know, agents make so much money. The average agent, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I wanna say the average agent in the United States makes gross probably less than $60,000. And out of that, they have to pay their brokerage their, and they're self-employed. They have to pay their medical insurance, retirement, mortgage. All, they pay all their stuff themselves, right? They don't uh, get medical coverage. They don't get uh, retirement. They have to pay everything. You're going to see a consolidation among the biggest real estate agents. And once you see those consolidations in different areas, you're gonna see prices 
for commission structure to go up. So that was a quick rundown of what I think, you know, what the settlement is and what I think some of the potential impacts are going to be. But we'll have to see how it shakes out. But if you have questions, you want to talk about your specific situation or something I said in here you have questions about, contact me below, schedule some time with me, use one of the links in the video description. If you like the video, even though it was a little bit haphazard today, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to show it to other people with interests similar to yourself. Hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you know each and every time I drop a new video. And I'll see you in the next video.